Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I want to continue to express my appreciation to the production staff for their service to the gospel truth. And I'm praying that God will continue to bless them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will bless you and your family members with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so again, in the interest of time, we're going to forego our prayer list and our public service announcements. But be aware of the fact that we do have a prayer list and you can write to us and send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones to P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California. Or you can also call us at area code 510 848 8843. But you can write to us or you can call us and we will add the names to the prayer list. Or if you call us and you have a Bible question, we will address that on the air. Okay, so this evening we're going to continue in our Memphis lectures. And this evening uh, we've been blessed to have as a speaker coming to us from Mound Bayou, Mississippi, Dr. Harvey M. Jackson. So without any further remarks, Dr. Harvey Jackson. My assigned topic has to do with three words that sets up three questions asked by God. God acts from the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3, verse Number six, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Yeah. Verse number eight says, and they heard the voice of God. Walking in the garden in the cool of the evening, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. But verse number nine, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where are thou? So that's the where. Question number one. Uh, and then we find in verse number 11, and he said, who told thee that I were naked? And then that's the who. And the what? God said to the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Three historical, rhetorical questions. Yeah. Set it up, Three rhetorical questions from God. Life is often defined by the questions we ask. The questions we ask often reveal what we are thinking of the direction that we are going. Questions are vital to life situation and circumstances. We use them to interact with people. I'm talking about questions. We ask questions to discover information. We ask questions because we are curious about a topic. 
We ask questions to strike up a conversation. Yes, sir. We ask questions so we can have something to talk about and learn about people. We ask questions to assess whether students are learning. Teachers and parents ask these questions so that they can determine what their students or children have learned. Questions play an important part in the role in which God has given us. Because God is a God of questions. We are talking about three of his questions uh, here tonight. Uh, uh, whenever God gets ready, to make a statement, he poses a question. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well. Because he instructs by his questions. Well, yeah. You remember? Yes, sir. He asked Job, where are you? Yeah. Or where were you? Rather, when I laid the foundation. The foundation. Yeah, where were you? He asked Abraham, is there anything too hard uh, for the Lord? Yeah. When they laughed about, they were going to have a child. He asked Cain, where is your brother? He asked Moses, what is in your hand? He asked Elijah, what are you doing here? He asked Amos, what do you see? God has always been about questions. Yes, sir. Because he is teaching through questions. He asked Malachi, will a man rob God? He asked the lame man, do you want to be made whole? He asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? He asked the crowd, who touched me with the issue of blood? And on the Damascus road, he asked Saul, why persecuted? Bow me. But tonight we will limit ourselves to three rhetorical questions. come from God found in Genesis 3. The question of where are you is a theological question rather than a geographical question. A question of have you left from where you belong? Adam left where he belonged which affected what he believed and how he behaved. The question of where has to do with belonging, just in case I don't get there. The question of where have you left or moved away from where you belong? The question of who told you that you were naked is a question about what you believe. And the question about what is this thou has done is a behavioral question about behavior. So a, be a question about belonging, a question about what you believe, and a question about your behavior. You're not, you're not, you're not no, you know, you know, if you're not where you belong, well, well, then you believe the wrong thing. And if you believe the wrong thing, now you behave wrong because of what you believe. The, the first question is where are you? He was not asking for a geographical. He knew where Adam was. He wanted Adam to know where he was. Where he was. Where are you is a reflective question. Intended to cause one to think and reflect. Where are you is a searching question. Not one aimed to find information, but more so to call attention to, to the fact of where you are within yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Adam was hiding. He was hiding. God knew he was hiding. But God wanted Adam to know that he was hiding. Adam was hiding from the voice of God rather than heeding the words of God. Adam was making up excuses. You know, I know doing anything he could to keep from admitting that he had done wrong. You do not, you not know the question of where are thou was a question to awaken Adam's consciousness to the state of his condition. It was a wake up call, church. It was a wake up call. They were dead spiritually. They were without the fellowship with God. Their innocence replaced by guilt and shame. They were ashamed, they were confused, they were fearful, they were guilty. And so as a result, they were hiding among the bushes. Of not wanting to hear from God. When we know we are messed up, when we are moved away from where God placed us, we don't want to deal with. We don't want to hear from God. So we stop reading our Bibles. We don't want to hear no sermons. We don't want to hear nobody preaching. Because we are moved away from. From where God has placed us. And I know in terms of the relationship, are you for what you ought to be against? Well, well. Hiding. Good question. Good question. Are you enjoying what you ought to be despising? Well, well. Hiding. Well. Are you running to what you ought to be running from? Well. Hiding. Well. Are you accepting what you ought to be rejecting? Well. Hiding. Well. Are you giving in to what you should be giving up? Well. Hiding. Well. Hiding. Well. Hiding. We move a place where we belong. Where do, where do we be? We belong in Christ. Every man belongs in Christ. In Christ. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 16 that he might reconcile us in one body. That's where we belong. Romans 8 says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. You know, Ephesians 2 and verse number 12 says uh, that at that time you were without Christ, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. You moved away from where God had placed it. The tree was in the center. Adam had been placed on the east of the garden. Yeah, yeah. But now they were. They were hiding from God. Where you belong. <coughs> where you belong is where God places us. Where he establishes us. Where he can communicate with us. And then God asked Adam, who told you? <coughs> who told you? Who told you? When you move away from where you belong with God. Now you move to the second question. The second question was a question about belief. Who told you that you were, you were naked? Who told you? Adam says, we were hiding because we were, we were naked. God said, I never used that word naked. <laughs> Where did you get that from? What? Who you been talking to? Who you been talking to? What? When you talk to the wrong folk, well, when you hear the wrong stuff, you believe the wrong stuff. The wrong stuff. Yeah. God knew that there were only four possibilities. That they were listening, they had been listening to their own voice. 
And I, and I know the, and I know God called unto Adam. Who told you that you were naked? Number one, there is a voice within. Number two, there's a voice without. Number three, there is a voice below. And number four, there is the voice above. The voice from within is self. The voice from without is aware. The voice from below is sin. And the voice from above is God. And it all depends upon who you talk to. Or who you've been listening to as to what you believe. The voice from within self. It's not, it's not so much of what other folks say to you. It's what you say to yourself. Because you do more talking to yourself than anybody else. So and so said something that they just messed up my day. It's not what they said. It's what you said. When you hear the wrong voice, it depends upon whose voice you are listening to as to what you say to yourself. Then there's a voice from without. That's the world's influence. Who you been talking to? The second question, you're naked. Your response to your condition, then your response to your position has to do with who you've been listening to. God, I never, I, I never mentioned naked, but Adam came up with the word naked. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not no wild influences. And we, we, we in the church, but often want to be like the word. World influences us. Parents say it's true. Child come home cursing. You never heard me curse. Where you get that from? You never heard your, your, your daddy curse? Where did you get that from? World influences. The school's influences. Who you been talking to? Whoever you, if you listen to the wrong voice, you believe the wrong stuff. Amen. Marriage, mm. self, family, church, all has to do with whose voice we hear. Yeah, yeah. The voice of self should respond from the voice of God. Think of what Adam should have, what Adam should have told Eve when she, when she brought him that fruit. Well, say it. She, he, he should have told Eve well, what the voice of God said. Uh, uh, that's what he should have heard. Yeah. But he had been influenced. Well, you see, uh -huh. the voice of God, he, everything would have been okay if he had simply told Eve and taken the position that God said. God said. That was his responsibility. Well, well. That's every preacher's responsibility uh, when they stand before God's children yeah. Sunday after Sunday is to tell the folk what God said. Yeah. When somebody emails you, texts you, whatever, our job always, day by day, we have to be reminded of what God says. Yeah. What God says. Yeah. What about this business? What about that business? You know, you know, it's all about what God says. And your response is always based on who you've been listening to. And if you close up, if you close up the Bible, then you that's good preacher. Hear a voice other than God. For every word of God is pure; it is a shell unto them that put their faith in it. Yes, sir. So God wanted to know, wanted to know from Adam, you know, I know who told you that you were naked? Where did you get the information? How can you come up with, with a church that's not even in the Bible? And start, who you been listening to? How can
can you take baptism out of God's plan? It all depends upon who you've been listening to. Who told you that baptism was not necessary? Who told you that any church is all right? Who told you to rename the church that Jesus bought with his own blood? Who told you? Who you been talking to? With everything, the Lord's church that's in the Bible was blood bought. Holy Spirit sealed. And Christ is ahead of it. And I know, and, 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 and our job is, is to let the folk know what the voice of God said. That's all Adam had to do. That's it, preacher. But oftentimes we act just like Adam. Act like we have forgotten what God said. Then that, and then that third question. Who told you? Who told you? No good preacher right here. Who told you? Yeah, that's good right there. Who told you? Yeah. Yes. Any voice other than the voice of God is a wrong voice. Yeah. Its method is deceptive. Its goal is destructive. Its end is decay. Its lust is fading. Its value is decaying. Its charm is deceiving. And, it, and, and its return is dwindling. Any voice. Any voice. Other than the voice of God. Well. He is the wrong voice. Yeah, right, right, right. When you don't hear the voice of God, you're not, you're not, no, uh, 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 we develop a misguided appetite. When we don't hear the voice of God, we develop a misdirected passion. When we don't hear the voice of God, we miss him, our desires. We switch gold, God for gold. We switch grace for greenbacks. We switch home for houses. We switch God's time for good times. We switch good sense for nonsense. We switch virtue for righteous living. We switch churches for casinos. We, we switch prayer time for party time. God's truth for Satan's lies. When you don't hear the voice of God. That's why God designed for us to come together on the first day of every week. To hear our number thank God for the week we just brought us through. Yeah. And we stand on the first day of a new week yeah. to praise him yeah. for a week that we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Amen. But our faith and trust is in him. Yeah. And then this last question, what is this? What is this? Thou has done. Right now. That's behavioral. Uh, it done something. <laughs> Behold! <laughs> The Lord's hands are not short, that he cannot see. His ear is not heavy, that he cannot hear. But your sins and your iniquities are separated between you and God. Oh, my friend, what is this thou hast done? What have we done to the home? What have we done to family? What have we done to school system? What have we done to our communities? What have we done to churches? We go on and on to talk about what have we done? What is this? What is this? What is this? Thou has done the three questions. But I'm glad. I'm glad. Even though Adam had messed up. Well. I'm glad that even though Eve had eaten up the forbidden fruit, yeah. and even though even though all of this had gone on in their relationship, now has been broken. Yeah. Adam has now sown sold fig leaves together and tried to cover himself. But I, I I'm glad that God, being a God of mercy. Asks his three questions, but after he asks his three questions, then God began to, to say to Adam, then to do for Adam, I know you messed up. I know you made some mistakes. I know the woman that I gave you, you know, you know, you know, she gave to you and you did it. I know you was high, and I know you tried to cover yourself. But then God, the Bible says, kill a lamb. 
Yeah, God took animal skin. Uh -huh. Yeah, a lamb. Yeah. First year, lamb, spot, dark spot. Yeah. And covered. God said, I'm going to cover you. I know you messed up, but I'm going to cover you. I know you made a mistake, but I'm going to cover you. Man can't, cut, can't cover himself. They're going to take God to cover you. And God covered Adam. And he based on the same covering yes, that we have today. Yes, and that is the blood of Jesus. Yes, and I know no one that John said, Behold the Lamb of God yes, that takes away the sins of the world. Yes. He covered Adam. He covered Eve. Yes. And he covers us today yes. all based on the one Lamb of God yes, that takes away the sins yes. of the world. Yes. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No flaw in his life. A spotless lamb. And I know a lamb, no blemish in his character. No spot in his spirit. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the lamb of God. As God, God had to let him die. Because yes, he became the sacrificial lamb yes, that covers all of us. Yes, and we all make mistakes. All and we all, you know, go, you know, go against God. But I'm thankful Thank that God has a pencil with an eraser on it. Yes. And I know that he doesn't mind. He's a forgiving God. Yes. And he believes in covering us with the blood of Christ. Yes. And so we stand as he was stood yes. when I see the blood. I'm going to pass over you. Yeah. I'm glad that God has been passing over us yeah. day after day. Yeah. He just didn't pass over in the land of Egypt. Yeah. He passes over every day. Yeah. You're not knowing takes care of us because we're under the blood. No defects in his work. No doubt in his devotion. No lack in his love. No guile in his mouth. No untruth in his testimony. No error in his advice. No failure in his I'm talking about Jesus, yeah. the Lamb of God yeah. that covers us. Uh -huh. No mistake in his mission. No shift in his responsibility. And no fault in his faithfulness. I'm glad that Jesus mm -hmm. covers us. Yes, sir. And if you're here tonight. Well, God is still in the covering business. Yeah. He covered Adam. Yeah. He covered Eve. Yeah. And he covers every last one of his children. Yeah. All you got to do, you not know, is humble yourself. Humble yourself. And I know and admit to God and say to God, forget that. You not know and stay under the blood. No matter what happens, stay under the blood. Stay under the blood of Jesus because there is nothing. That can make you whole again. Except the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. And so, my friend, when we when we look at these situations, when we look at what God does, He covers us. He covers, He is He is available and ready to cover the sinner tonight. If He's willing to get into the church through baptism, He covered Saul. And I know when Saul went through baptism, caught him up to the third heaven, he covered Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, his whole family. He covered the Philippian jailer. He covered you and he covered me. He covered us and, and, and because we are covered, and I know God is able to have a relationship with us. Yes. While together we stand and while we sing, won't you come?